Hello and uh, welcome back to uh, Kirk uh, Plays Kerbal Space Program. Uh, we're not doing a Let's Play episode today. I thought we'd, um, we'd have a look at one of the more frustrating parts of the game, meaning uh, space planes. Uh, some of our newer players are probably having a hell of a time with them, so uh, this is my way of providing a helping hand. Um, I've already uh, got something prepared here, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to go through some of the uh, some of the information uh, that you need in order to build successful planes and go to um, North Pole, South Pole, some of the closer Easter eggs uh, that are around the um, around KSC. So let's have a look at what I've got here. It's a fairly simple build. You can see uh, nothing too complicated, nothing uh, requiring action groups or anything like that. So uh, the most important part of the plane, uh, in my in my view, is this right here. Uh, it's called the avionics package. It's basically an SAS that's especially designed for planes. And I find that a lot of people often overlook these when, uh, we'll build, uh, when building space planes. It does a lot to help with, uh, with stability. I've got two radial intakes here. It's really all you need for this, uh, for this single engine sort of build that's uh, not high altitude, not designed to go into orbit. Uh, and it's basically just a trainer plane. But yeah, that's why I use this cockpit here. I really hope it gets some love soon. Uh, there's no internal view. I'd really love to have some of the instrumentation inside. Um, I mean, there is a view, but it's not its not fleshed out at all. You can't do anything with it. Um, so uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into it. Already uh, tried recording this tutorial um, for, but then the uh, recording got messed up, so having to redo it. But uh, enough of that, let's uh, go ahead and get right into this here. Um, so uh, basically, uh, f and I'll, I'll go through flying these, and then uh, maybe not so uh, so well designed a t uh, tutorial, we'll, we'll go ahead and talk a little bit about balance. Um, but first of all, in order to take off, what I generally do is I put the brakes on a little counterintuitively uh, and ramp up the power to full throttle, then start the engine. And because this engine is so powerful, it will actually outdo the brakes and the, s the plane will start moving forward kind of like that. If I take off the brakes, immediately start building speed, and uh, we're able to, to take off. Now, you can see I'm kind of fighting the plane for, for stability here, and uh, if you have a less stable plane, maybe a bigger one, that's generally one of the things that you um, that you encounter. This is a fairly stable one, so it kind of points, uh, points itself into the airstream on its own, but uh, one of the things that, uh, that really helps is the avionics package. You see, I turn the SAS on, and it basically, without any input from me at all, it, it just flies on its own. And I can roll, I can sort of point it in any direction, take my hand off the keyboard, and it does it on its own. So, really important part to have. I'm not sure exactly what happens uh, if you don't have it. Um, so, let's build some altitude here just to make sure I don't crash it into, into the ground. Because I do tend to do that, so... <laughs> I don't know, maybe 3,000, 3,000 should do it. See, the SAS is maintaining this exact heading, uh, more or less, uh, without any sort of input from, from myself. So let's turn the SAS off and see what it does. Again, no input for me. Kind of wants to veer off. It's pretty stable on its own, but if I if I do this, it's gonna 
or if I point away from the, yeah, if I point away from the uh, prograde marker from the airstream, it tends to sort of wobble around. And if I do this, uh, this kind of loses stability. Not really the sort of situation you want to find yourself in. So uh, that that's basically how you crash a plane. Um, this one's pretty stable, like I said, so it kind of wants to point into the airstream. But if I say if, it, if I do something like this, it's not really I'm having a tough time putting this into a spin. But um, if I turn on SAS, it automatically like auto adjusts. Right away. So another thing that uh, sure new players um, don't know about is intake air. Let's see if we can put this in the stall. You can see the indicator. Uh, and you can see the resource marked right here. Uh, generally, it tells you uh, how much air is being sucked in through these intakes, and your engine. Your jet engine doesn't have oxidizer in the fuel tanks, so it uses air as an oxidizer, as opposed to the uh, rockets, which don't, uh, which have their internal oxidizer supply. So let's go ahead and see what happens when you run out of intake air. So we're going to time accelerate to a sort of higher altitude here. You can see I'm at 0.16 in intake air, and uh, it's uh, it's kind of dropping. And hopefully, we'll be able to put the plane in the stall. With more complicated planes, this is a lot easier. I'm at 0 0.07. At 0.6, engine stall. It's called flame out. It's basically starved of oxygen, and it's not currently producing power anymore. So all I have to to work with is my uh, is my lift. So uh, basically, just uh, drifting upwards right now. Let's see how high I'm going to get. Not very. So. At this point, my prograde marker is kind of falling down. I'm pointing away from the airstream because I don't have any power. The SAS isn't really doing anything for me either. Uh, I can't, because I don't have a lot of speed, I can uh, basically in a flat spin. And uh, not a whole lot can uh, can be done without, without power. Uh, but again, because this is a simple plane, it'll tend to write itself. So it really helps when uh, I'm trying to learn to fly to have a simple plane to, to work with. So again, we're at 0 0.2, 0 0.3, not a whole lot of intake air. So let's go ahead and see if we can uh, point this back into the airstream, because that's how you get your intake air back. See, it popped. At 0.7, um, so uh, we can uh, we can go ahead and try to write this. And generally, I'm gonna keep it pointed into the airstream, but I have a lot of intake air now. It's not a lot compared to, to the benchmark, but generally, if you're above like, 0.10 um, per engine. Try to stay at around uh, 0 0.07 times the number of engines that I've got going. So you might ask yourself, how do people get those? If it's so easy to, to flame out, how do people get those ridiculous speeds where you, uh, you get like the re-entry effects uh, on the plane and, and all that kind of stuff? Basically, you climb at a more sedate pace, so the plane has enough time to build up speed. And by building up speed, uh, you get 
more airflow over these uh, intakes so you uh, your intake air stays at the uh, sort of more manageable level so let's go ahead and time accelerate here I'm going to climb to say 13,000 uh, until we're out of this uh, lower part of the atmosphere because another another thing with speed is you have to get high up so uh, you don't get so much drag on the plane as you would at a lower altitude you're not going to be able to go at uh, a mile a second close to the ground uh, I'm sure you can kerbal engineer a way into doing it but uh, with any kind of a workable plane that's uh, it's easy to build and uh, sort of practical and not ridiculous looking. Uh, it's just not going to be possible. So we're coming up pretty fast. This dial here tells me what my climb rate is. Uh, my intake here is at uh, 0.14. Again, it may not seem like much, but it's a pretty safe place for it to be. And I'm just building up speed right now. See, I'm a lot higher up and my speed is climbing accordingly. Um, you want to keep this, uh, this dial here uh, at between 10 and 100. Uh, that's sort of a s safe climb rate uh, in that it, it makes it so you climb at about the rate that you gain speed. So uh, the higher you go, faster we can go. And as you can see, already we're getting uh, some of those uh, effects coming into play here. Um, I can probably fly this plane uh, at around 1100 meters per second if I really uh, sort of uh, try. And, uh, well, let's, let's actually go ahead and try here. Maybe I can get up to 1000. fairly sedate pace, uh, keeping an eye on the intake air, uh, we're at uh, point 10, uh, and I'm going to try to sort of keep it that way. Uh, like I said, at the limit you want point zero 0.07 per engine, so make sure that my, uh, <coughs> my uh, Climb rate is above zero, below zero means you're falling. Um, so it's it's a more accurate gauge of your uh, attitude than the nav ball because <coughs> excuse me because the nav ball sort of uh, it it doesn't have like a, a numerical value for for your pitch. So our point nine still kind of far from, from our target speed, but the higher you go, the, uh, <coughs> the, the more careful you need to be because of uh, the possibility of flame out. If you flame out, you're going to lose a lot of altitude, and then uh, extrapolating, you're going to lose the possibility of more speed. So we're, we're building speed quite uh, happily. Don't necessarily need to pitch up a whole lot more. You can see the indicator is just, uh, just above zero, so we're just climbing. And uh, our acceleration is pretty good, so you want to stay at around zero until your uh, your speed kind of levels out, and then you can, uh, you can go ahead and climb some more. Again, keeping close watch on your intake air. Don't want to flame out. Uh, keep this going. So 0.8 is safe. 0.7 is safe. Uh, but you don't want to be at 0.7 because you don't know whether your intake's going up or down. So if it hits 0.6, you're going to flame out. So we're, we're still gaining speed at a pretty good rate. Okay, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, doesn't really know, so I'm going to let it uh, drop a little bit, and we're past 1,000 meters per second. 
So there you go, a re-entry effect on the plane. Looks pretty cool. Um, so yeah, enough of that. Let's go ahead and uh, sort of drop a little bit. And another point I wanted to touch on is landing on the runway. Uh, this is one of those issues um, that can be kind of tricky to master, and especially if you're if you're coming in from orbit on a space plane, um, it's difficult to sort of gauge where the uh, where the runway is. Um, so it's uh, it's pretty important to uh, know a couple of facts. Um, one. The runway is precisely lined up with the equator. And once I uh, complete this turn here, I'm going to show you guys exactly why that's important. Um, for one thing, it's pointing east to west, or west to east, where you want to put it. Um, so, you know, heading west, you know that you're at least you're parallel with the runway, but you also want to be uh, coming up on the runway. The one where you don't want to make a, sh a sh sharp turn when you're trying to land because uh, well that can lead to a well, very crumble landing. So uh, that's that's not what we want. We want a clean landing. We want to uh, we want to be real pilots. So you know, in as much as the Kerbal Space Program makes you a real pilot. So um, so we're making this turn here. I don't really care about my speed uh, right now because what I'm going to make sure what I'm doing is that I'm aligned with the uh, with the runway first and foremost, and then we can the farther out you, you align with the runway, the, the better it means your, your the correction that you need to to make will be that much smaller, so it's a cleaner landing. Uh, and one thing that really helps is already having something in orbit. But if you don't, what you can do is you can use the orbit of the moon. Because the moon is also on an equatorial orbit, but my space station is on the, it's on the equator. If I line this up, you can see it's going right above KSC. And uh, since it's right on the equator, it's actually flush with the runway. So you can see uh, the direction which I'm pointing, first of all, it's not easterly. Second of all, I'm actually south of the runway. If I just point it east and flew that way, uh, at some point I'd realize that I'm not actually uh, I'm not correct. Uh, I'm not pointing correctly. So what I do is I turn the plane around. I'm trying to get some altitude so we can get some, some better speed here because uh, I don't want to make this episode last forever. So I uh, just sort of make sure that I'm right on the plane that my camera angle is right on the plane of the equator and sort of try to gauge exactly when uh, in that view I'm uh, fairly close to uh, to the equator because Kerbin isn't a huge planet uh, even in, like small turns if you do a 180 you'll actually travel distance away from, from the equator. So let's go ahead and turn back on the 90. Back on the 90. So gingerly bringing it there. You can also use the rudder to turn, but it's a lot slower, so that's why uh, sometimes it, it's a lot easier to, to just bank in the direction you want to turn and then pull up. Okay, so my prograde marker is easterly and I'm sort of lined up with, uh, with the orbit of my space station. I'm pointing east. So now I know I'm very close to being pointed straight at the orbit. Even though I'm on the other side of the continent and uh, I don't actually, uh, I can't actually see the station, uh, the, uh, the runway. In fact, I, I know that I'm more than 100 kilometers from it because none of the debris that's already over there is, is showing up on, the, on my view here. So let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit. So so 
we can uh, just get there faster. Okay, we're climbing a little bit too aggressively for my liking. Hopefully not. Also, don't want to bank too much in any direction. Um, I want this to uh, to stay on that bearing that I had before. So I can just check my map here, and you can see that I'm not on that bearing, so I'll just correct it slightly. The plane kind of wants to go up, meaning probably my center of mass has, yeah, my center of mass has drifted back behind the uh, center of lift, so that's a problem, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll have to deal with it. Okay, I'm not pointed in the correct direction, so I have to correct for this. Okay. Okay, east. So the plane just wants to uh, to go up uh, because I, because draining all that fuel has moved the center of uh, mass toward the back of the plane. So we constantly have to, to be fighting it. Okay. So let's go ahead and drop our speed down because dropping our speed will also drop our lift, so this effect becomes much less important. We are 50 some kilometers away, so uh, we should start actually seeing the runway uh, pretty soon. One thing that's important to know is that it's not perpendicular to the edge of this peninsula here where KSC is, and it can uh, be easy to, to be distracted from, from that. And all that sort of fighting the plane has made us drift. I don't know if you can see it, but I, I can see the landing strip there. And it's, uh, it's a little bit to, to my left, a little bit to, to the north, so just pointing a little bit to the north, making small corrections, slow and steady, uh, to make sure that we're going to be lined up with it. And we're still pretty far away, so we can be looking forward to, to make these corrections. I'm kind of nervous about the landing now that I've realized uh, this uh, lift issue. So you can see it, the plane wants to point its nose directly up. If I didn't have SAS on this plane, I'd be crashing uh, with no hope of getting anywhere near the runway because of the uh, center of uh, lift being so far, I'm imagining, uh, ahead of the center of mass. Okay, so now that, we, uh, that we're getting closer and closer, uh, we can actually cut the power. This plane uh, glides fairly well, I hope. Um, so we can uh, we can cut the power and just kind of um, <coughs> glide our way um, into the uh, 
runway approach. Now another thing that uh, I used to do, and I'm fairly certain a lot of, uh, of our newer players are doing, uh, is I was afraid of actually hitting the side of the runway, uh, like the the beginning of the runway, or falling short. Uh, and I often ended up uh, basically flying over the runway and not landing at all because uh, I was being too sort of cons uh, too conservative with uh, with my altitude. Um, and I found that generally, um, sort of keeping as low as possible without actually um, falling basically from from the sky. Um, helps, and you want to hit sort of the beginning of the runway uh, so that you can use as much of it as, as possible uh, for for your your slowdown maneuvers. So um, just a little bit off center here. That should be good. Uh, again, because of the center of mass being so far away uh, from the uh, center of lift by this point, um, you know, using as little fuel as possible um, makes it so it doesn't drift further uh, than it already has, so, and I'm confident that uh, we can actually just glide there. Point the noise, point the nose down. And just sort of maintain this bearing. Looks like we're almost going to miss it. We can uh, sort of use the rudder, apply a little bit of power just to get in a little closer. down. I've applied probably less power than is needed to get this into the air even. But uh, as you can see, just cut the engine at that point and just put it down right on the center line. So slow and steady. Just don't try too hard because you might uh, either miss or come in in weird ways. So just apply the brakes, keep the nose down because it wants to go up. We're still going pretty fast. And there you go, we're on the ground. Um, so let's go ahead and have a look in the VAB and see what makes uh, why the uh, how you can make it so that the uh, center of, uh, so that your plane is basically, uh, it's balanced. So, let's end this flight and go back to the space plane hangar. So we have our center of mass over here at the bottom left. It's also center of um, lift. You can also check the center of thrust. You want all three of these to be uh, on the same line. You want them to be collinear uh, because if your center of thrust is away from your center of uh, mass, um, it will want to spin. So say the center of thrust was here, the plane will want to spin in that direction. Uh, if it was here, it will want to spin in that direction. Uh, if it's off the line of the center of lift, you will start flipping. Basically, plane will want to lift this way and the thrust will be pointing that way so your plane will be doing sort of barrel rolls. Uh, so you want these to be aligned but the center of thrust uh, is a lot easier to, to, to have just aligned by default especially with the single engine plane so I'm going to turn that off and basically you want your center of uh, mass to be ahead of your center of lift because that will make sure 
that your nose is always wants to point down slightly. This makes it easier to be pointed into the um, into the airstream. Uh, as you saw toward the end of, uh, of my flight there, um, if your center of lift is ahead of your sorry, I, uh, if your center of lift is ahead of your center of mass, say it like that. That, the nose will want to keep pointing up, so you're constantly um, fighting the plane because it wants to do a flip. And because I've managed to land the plane, I'm going to just move the wheels here so the engine doesn't clip the runway. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. So let's go ahead and launch. Again, just like before, turn the SAS on. Well, first wait for physics to kick, and to kick in. Okay, SAS on, brakes on. Thrust all the way up. And power. Now this, I'm pretty sure, will take off on its own. But we'll just have to see. Release the brakes. So I'm not applying any sort of controls. So maybe it won't stop on its own, but we can uh, give it a little bit of a nudge. Worry with the gear. You can see I'm not applying any sort of controls, and the nose is already started to point straight up. Um, now this is mitigated in part by the fact that I have SAS on, and it's trying to keep the plane steady. But if I turn it off, watch what happens. Okay, so the lift is dragging the plane around the center of mass. So it doesn't really know, it, it's not able to, to fly stably. And the more you fight this, the more it'll start flipping out. So it's really difficult to, um, to stabilize. And that's why they say that the uh, uh, plane with the center of mass behind the center of lift will fly, but only once. So pressing SAS kind of helps, kind of, sort of helps. Um, but at that low altitude that I, uh, that I released the, uh, the SAS, there, there wasn't really a whole lot to, to be done. So, intake survived. So, uh, yeah, there you go. That's, uh, that's my take on, on space planes. If you found this video helpful at all, or entertaining, though I must admit I'm not the most uh, entertaining person, I guess. Uh, do feel free to give me a like, uh, comment if you uh, feel like you need to critique something that I've said, or if you want to say anything at all, feel free to, to leave a comment and subscribe. If you uh, if you want to see more of this stuff, I'm uh, a fairly small channel, so. Uh, well, fairly small, really small. Uh, so yeah, if you if you feel like uh, like you want to give me a hand, do any of those three. Uh, it's really important to, to us little guys. So hopefully I'll be able to uh, put up some more of this uh, of these uh, videos. So uh, thanks uh, very much for watching, and uh, have a good one.